So we are. Uh, when do you, you're playing? So we've gone. Where? When do I go into a state of Haram? And I said they announced that. Do we get to Jeddah? We get to Jeddah. Um, don't rush off the plane because you're not going to go anywhere. Uh, that everyone does it though, don't they? As soon as it's like they're desperate to get off the plane, which is understandable. You've been cl you know stuck in the plane for hours, but I just sit down and wait for everyone to get off, and then you know because you're, you're going to be basically going to go into Jeddah Airport. When we were there. Um, they were giving us pamphlets and all sorts of leaflets. I recommend you don't take them because you're not going to use them. Um, or, you know, people, you just got religious uh, literature you've got to get rid of. Mm. And so most people leave it in the hotel. Just say, you know, just that I'll um, pick it off. And th uh, then you are going to go through and that could take about an hour and a half, you know, where they check your passport, take a picture of you and mm. all sorts of these sorts of things. And then you'll be waiting in Jeddah for about two hours for your waiting for your mu'allim. So whilst you're there, you can freshen up, you can pray your prayers if you're going to pray your prayers. Um, and I think that's... Uh, when, you, oh, in, when you're in Jeddah airport, that's when you want to get your SIM card, mm -hmm. if you're going to do that. Because um, Zubair is telling me that in Mecca, it's absolutely manic to get a SIM card. So do it then. If you are going to get a SIM card then, you need to have a copy of passport, ID number from, from landing card, I think he said. And uh, activation can take up to 30 minutes. So uh, that's what he recommends to get your card there. Have some food. You have a wristband that you've got a, as a hood, one of the hujjads. You can keep that on you at all times. That, uh, Yeah. And so you'll be waiting for the Muhammad for about maybe two hours. And then you'll get onto the coach. And then, uh, so if Fajr hasn't come in, uh, that, sorry, if Fajr's come in, pray in Jeddah, do not delay till you get to Mecca because the, anything can happen on the road to Mecca. Mm. Uh, you, it can take two to three hours sometimes because of the traffic. But what they do, what, when we were there, they were every time the bus is stopping, people were coming on and giving us these little Hajj packages that had like Zamzam in it and like um, some biscuits and stuff. But you eventually get sick of that. <laughs> you know? And they give that out in Mosdelifer, and Mosdelifer was a major issue when it comes to food. So um, have some. Oh, that's why it's so important to have some water on you uh, in your suitcase. Have some stuff, obviously in your main luggage, not in your. <coughs> can, yeah. can I just ask you? Is it necessary? I read somewhere that we should take a copy of our a vaccination certificate. I have no idea. We'd have to speak to your. Okay, I thought that was just for the visa. You know, yeah. it's your manager. It's you need, I think. Yeah. For your visa, I can ask that's what we're doing. Yeah. Visa, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah, so ask, find those things out. Um, so you're journeying, uh, and then you'll get off your hotel, you'll get off your coach, and make sure you get all your luggage off the coach. Okay, make sure it's got on. So that's what, so basically for the guys, get all the women on the coach, and then you go and make sure you see your luggage get on the actual coach that you're getting on. And then once you get to the airport, make sure it comes off. Um, because things can happen then you'll go into the lobby obviously and that's when you want to sort out your rooms because all sorts of fights can happen here <laughs> because hang on a minute I'm supposed to be so and so are you staying in the, your rooms together or are you being separated only I think in, in Medina and Mecca together I think. but then in Shisha we're just yeah. Yeah. men and women are you guys uh, where would where we're, we're quad sharing so he's sharing with three of the guys have you got people in your room that you don't know yeah, yeah. When okay. we met them, though, when we went to the seminars. So, the, the, so you're going to go into a room with people. What's really important is, one, that you um, don't let... No, you, uh, they said it on the Dome Tours one, I read it, is that the um, you don't have anyone come into your room other than yeah. yourselves. And so if you need to meet family members in the lobby, mm. because people get offended and upset yeah. and uncomfortable, mm. don't bring food into the room unless they're comfortable. You're, yes. You know, say, just say, because it, you know, people get the, the smell of the food. Fighting over the AC temperature is going to happen. Yeah, I think that's the biggest one. They said, <laughs> they said dome tours, they were saying 20 to 21 degrees is usually the agreed yeah. temperature. <laughs> but some people don't want to sit underneath the AC. Yeah. So um, if you're not too bothered, you just you know, mm. make sure your shoes are put by the door. A big issue we had on Hajj is like other family members or even themselves just knocking and then walking straight through, straight in. Mm. Yeah. Um, so make sure people know the etiquettes of don't open the door until uh, if it's especially if someone's not from the room yeah. that they knock and wait which is hard to instill that habit in some people but 
people can get I, it's really offensive like, uh, people can get really offended obviously like that um, and so just have good communication between you uh, the people in your room about these things uh, I said that yeah so now we come out the first thing is don't try to do it all, well depending on circumstances but generally I don't recommend people to do it on straight away just get some rest so you can do the Umrah any time, okay? Everyone's like, oh, oh, go do Umrah, go do Umrah, oh, yeah? And, uh, and, and no, take your time, relax. It's recommended to have a shower before you go and do it. Uh, that shower, you shouldn't rub too much, okay? So it's just basically getting yourself wet. So can you use, like, non-fragrance shampoo? Yeah, you like could. If, you, if it's non-fragrance, yeah. But I recommend just, uh, you know, if it's non-fragrance, it's fine, but... Um, and then so relax, you can do the next day the umbra, it's not necessary to do it then. Okay. Especially if you guys have been before, you've done an umbra before, you know what the store is, so mm. you don't have to So it's nice to find someone who's not done it before, so if you have done it before you can take them along with you. Mm. Um, so just make sure everyone's settled, everyone's got their rest, and then plan when you go out. When you go out, you want basically to get the a card of the hotel. Because when I, basically, I got lost straight away. I lost my sandals on the first day, and I got lost, and I couldn't find my way back to the hotel on the first day. So, uh, I, get, I, I get a card for the hotel, um, and I would get find out where the, U, where the UK embassy is, because you get free medication um, there. You get doctors there, help people if, if need be. You know, when I went there, well, the aunties were waiting to fill up their bags of medication. <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. <laughs> um, and so once you walk out of the hotel, just start getting landmarks of like, uh, you know, so you, you can work your way back. The first Umrah I do, do these guys need to go with me or could they go with no, themselves? No, they go by themselves. But I recommend people go in a group to get, and it depends. The guys generally, you know, some guys just want to do it themselves. They know what they're doing, I want to do it myself. That's fine. Uh -huh. but just communicate with one another. Like they, they, they might want you or, you know, or they, are you okay? Have you got someone to go with and mm -hmm. so forth? So just make sure you What's communicate. What's general safety wise? Like, because we're arriving um, so close to the time of Hajj, um, the crowds are going to be shoot very, very high. Safety wise, should you just always stick together? I don't think oh. it's, no, I don't think it's a no. problem. No. No. It's nice uh, generally to go with a little group of people, um, you know, to, um, just to have communication with people, one another, have some sort of way of engaging and me meeting up if need be and so forth mm -hmm. like that. But that's, about what, you know, gauge the first day, you, uh, you know, um, maybe go the first just to see what it's going to go out there just to see what it's like before you even do your umrah and come back to the hotel and assess the situation. Um, it's impossible for me to say. Something I forgot in Jeddah Airport, the closer you are to going uh, to the Hajj dates, is there's less people going through. It's less of a wait. So if you go early, there's more. It's more. Like, there's more of a wait. They say. Okay. So that. But that's. Don't quote me on that. Don't start contacting me and say you said. <laughs> you know, when that's what Zubaya said. So <laughs> you can get. You know, when you're planning to do so, say if you're back to the hotel, you relax and then you go do your umrah. Yeah. And uh, what if you you've started your umrah and the prayer time goes? We're going to talk about that. Okay.